What do you mean? That this has been not the- what? I feel like the veil has been lifted! Hey my friends and fishes, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about what it was that initially made me think that I might be autistic. So I'm going to start with some of the kind of symptoms or some of the things that I noticed about myself early on, some of my struggles, and then we're going to talk about what it was that really connected the dots for me. So I have always had massive sensory issues, be it sound, lighting, texture of food, clothing, you name it, I have an issue with it of some kind. And yes, we're going to say they're not differences, they are in fact issues because they have caused me a lot of distress throughout my life. Things like sounds, people chewing, repetitive sounds, loud sounds, even quiet sounds. I can hear electricity. I can hear technology, computer fans. I can hear people, the nose whistling sound. And it's not like I can hear it. It's like everything all at once is how I hear it. And sometimes it causes me a great deal of distress. I don't know why it took me almost my whole life to come to the conclusion that you can wear noise canceling headphones and or earplugs, but yet here we are. I've also had a lot of problems in my lifetime with the texture and taste of food. Texture definitely more than the taste of food, but texture has has always been a huge problem. Like slimy food, slippery food, oh god, fat in food, like fat in meat and such. You know, it's a problem. Anytime I go to a white spot or I go to a McDonald's, like I always order the same damn thing because I know exactly what I'm getting. I don't really enjoy natural foods because the consistency is never the same. You could eat two oranges off the same damn tree and they don't taste the same and it's 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 a problem. But at the heart of it, it comes down to clothing and the texture of, of clothing. I can tell you that if it was socially acceptable for me to walk my ass around naked, I'd be okay with that. But the other issue is I also like the weight of clothing, especially of hoodies. I wear everything usually a size to two sizes larger than I actually need it, with the exception of a few things like, you know, like bras or underwear and stuff like that, where I obviously <laughs> want to swim in it, right? But like t-shirts, I cannot with women's, women's t-shirts with the little armpit that's like up, what is that? What is that? No, I just don't see people having that kind of a thing. That was something across my lifetime that I just, you know, like, why can't I wear these specific things? Why does everybody else seem like they don't have this problem? Why is this just me? And I also struggle sometimes to be touched or to touch certain parts of my body together. Like if there's ever a, a yoga pose where you have to put your hands together, I have to do it like this because touching my palms together, like I can do it for little bursts. And I do do it sometimes like when I'm rubbing my hands together, like this is okay. This is not okay. That's not okay. Really not okay. Same thing with my feet. There's just certain ways of being touched that I really don't like. I'm very, very ticklish. Like I, it's, it's, it's not good, but it's not like ticklish, like, haha. It's like ticklish. I will burst into flames. Okay. <laughs> then there were things that I just thought maybe I was a shy individual. Eye contact is a biggie. I really don't like making eye contact with people. Like I've always thought about it a bit like an intimidation tactic when people make this excessive eye contact with me. It makes me so uncomfortable. And then I get upset about it. And I'm like, what's your problem? What are you trying to make? What are you doing? And then like, I'll force myself to do it. Like, are you trying to make a point? You're trying to show how tough you are? I've never understood eye contact. Like, honest to God, it makes me so uncomfortable. I can do it, but it's not, it's not pleasant. I pay for it later. And then I had a lot of social struggles. I had a lot of social struggles. I've had a lot of friendships just evaporate because I can't keep in touch. If I don't see somebody for a while, I kind of forget that they exist. Definitely have a problem with that. I have problems with memory, remembering things that were said to me in a short span. Like I can remember stuff from my childhood, like down to the minute. I can't remember stuff like that happened this morning. Like, have I had breakfast? Who knows? Do I feel hungry? I got nothing. But like social stuff, friendships, and not knowing where I ever stand with people is really hard. Like I sent a voice note this morning and I got a message back and I was like, oh God, did they interpret me the wrong way? This person is a dear friend of mine, but I'm over here like, oh God, did I say the right thing? Did I say the wrong thing? I don't want to lose them as a friend. So very often I say nothing in the hopes of not upsetting the balance. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like I also have a really hard time with things being very black and white. I don't have like a, there's no gray area with me. Like if you do something bad, you are just bad. There is no, I can't, I can't imagine that somebody who say lets their dog run around off leash is also a good person who pays their taxes and, and visits their, their grandparents every week and, and volunteers at, at a local, you know, for a local charity or something. Like I can't, like my brain does not comprehend that. I can force myself to try to understand it, but deep down you don't put your dog on a leash and I just, I think you're just a horrible person. There's only two ways of being. I'm working on it. It's not easy. It's not maybe my best quality, but, but what are you going to do? There's no, if there's a law, like I follow the law. It's so stupid. I'm also misinterpreted a lot. 
I mean a lot. In high school, so freaking much. I sigh, like, <sighs> and I do this, it's just expelling energy. It's a little bit of a stim. It's a little bit of a relaxation technique that I do. And it drives people up the fucking wall. Oh my god. Are you bored? Why are you so upset? What's your attitude about? Like, god, your attitude really sucks. My attitude really sucks. Listen, I am expelling air. I can understand maybe how it's interpreted that way because like the... <sighs> You know, like if I was doing that, I'd understand, but I was in math class and my teacher, I'm sitting right in the fucking middle of class too. And like, listen, math did not come easy to me. Oh, hell no, not mathematically inclined. I am just not in the way that you would expect, okay? And she's like, can you stop doing that? Like, I get that this is boring. I was like, okay, thank you for putting me, I was sweating profusely, the anxiety just building. I don't think I heard a word she said the whole rest of the class. People would also shush me a lot in my life and have shushed me or told me I'm over the top or why can't you calm down? You're talking too fast. It's really hard because I also view myself that way now too. So I, when I go back and I edit this, I am always like, oh God, Courtney, can you not calm down? Can you not chill out? And it's like, that's not how I feel on the inside. Right now I feel, I actually feel a little bit sick and a little bit of a headache and a little bit dizzy and a little bit tired, but that doesn't, that's not what comes across, right? I don't know how to fix that. I'm sorry that that makes you uncomfortable, but I don't know how to fix that. If I did, don't you think I would do something about it? I'm not trying. And I'm sick of masking. Honest to God, I'm sick of like, okay, we're going to act totally fine and totally normal just for everybody else's comfort. I also do a lot of repetitive behaviors. I don't do them as much in public because I have been shamed in the past for it and it does make me feel bad and feel guilty, but I do a lot of things. I don't do them even when I'm making videos because I know it can be hard to watch me doing these things. So I'll give you just a brief demonstration. So rocking back and forth like this, it's actually more, more like this. This is, I do this a lot. I do this a lot. I also do a side to side and then toe tap is, is a stim that I don't know where that came from. I also do little things like I do like a little happy dance. I also do, uh, I don't wave my hands or flap my hands. Like I don't do that, but I do like, like this. I do this a lot. I also sometimes will, but it's only in times of very like heavy duty stress. I have a chair that I, that I bounce in, that I rock in and I will like thump. I'll thump my back on the, on the back of it. And it feels like, it just feels really good to just like have that motion of, of hitting the back of the chair. So there's things like that. There's other ones that are more destructive that I won't talk about on here just because I don't want the video to get taken down or anything like that. Like, ah, uh, there were also other things relating to that, that I don't, uh, feel pain always the same way, which is really interesting that I'll suddenly have like a, a massive welt on my arm. I talked about this actually a long time ago in a video. I, in a moment of a very intense frustration with something or a meltdown is what it I know that it was now. I hit my hand on the table really hard trying to like snap myself out of it. And I had a bruise, I'm not kidding you, like the whole downside of my arm all here. It was purple and green and it was bad and it hurt after, but it took a long time for me to, st to like be like, oh, that was a bad thing that I did. In the moment, I didn't feel it at all. So there were little things like that, right? Then there were other, maybe less obvious because I feel like a lot of people have what they would probably perceive as like an obsession or a thing that they're really interested in. As a child, for me, dinosaurs, horses, mermaids, but on a, on another level, like dinosaurs especially, I had, and like, but like weird parts of it, right? So like dinosaur collecting and weird dinosaur facts and being able to name dinosaurs for every letter of the alphabet and little things like this. Then when it came to horses, I really wanted to be around horses and ride horses, but I had this really unique obsession with horse games. Um, and then mermaids, as you guys know, mermaids are probably the first and foremost biggest thing in my life. It is every aspect of my life, so it's not just my job. So when people come online and they say things about like, oh, well, you need to balance your, you don't really know what you're talking about because mermaiding is my special interest. It is my whole existence is just everything that I want to talk about is just mermaids. And right now, mental health and autism are actually becoming something that I really am, am diving into. And it's also been something that I was very fascinated with mental health and, and anti-bullying and stuff growing up. So lots of little, little things like that that I just didn't see reflected at me in, in most of the people around me. So what I first thought that this was, because what the hell, like how did we get from, from all of that to autism, right? What I first, at first, 
started researching were sensory issues because everything else didn't really mean much to me at that point. That was stuff that I discovered later and kind of connected the dots. I thought what I was having was either a panic disorder, an anxiety disorder, or I was having a sensory processing issue. And this is what I went to my doctor and was like, hey, hi. So at about 25, I was starting to like somewhere around there, like 23 to 25. I'm like, hey, I'm having some issues. I, I don't know why. And it was always just, yep, generalized anxiety disorder and depression. Do you want to go on some medication? And I was like, uh, not really. I have a real phobia of taking medication as well. It's, I'm not sure where that fits into all of this, but it scares the crap out of me. I, there's no hate if you're on medication. You do you have to do what's right by you. So please just no, that's where I stand. I am not somebody who's like, no medication, just just change your diet. Like, that's not how I roll. Okay, please, please God know that. That was what doctors explained it as. I had a therapist who was like, yep, generalized anxiety disorder, depression, and OCD. Fantastic. And a picky eater, that's it. That's what we kind of described it as. Now, the things that were noticed about me as a child were also a little bit different than kind of, it. I actually feel like I fit uh, a little bit more ADHD as a kid. Now, they weren't actually able to say definitively that you have ADHD as now as an adult, even though I, I meet most of the criteria. I don't meet enough, apparently, to have that kind of pinned in there as well. Things that my teachers noticed were she has eye contact issues. She doesn't make eye contact easily with a speaker. She's easily distracted, like, like wickedly easily distracted. And it's so funny because if I look distracted, I'm probably listening to you more intently. If I am focused on you and I'm not doing anything else, chances are I have no idea what you're saying. I didn't play nicely with other kids. I wasn't respectful of other children and their space. I wasn't able to just mingle with my peers as best as I probably should have been able to. I did listen. I was definitely not somebody who followed instruction well. I needed people to tell me things multiple times over. The blanket statement was Courtney does not try. Like, she's not trying hard enough. She's not listening. She's not trying hard enough. She's not working hard enough. She needs to try harder. That was like the general consensus of what it said. So between doctors and teachers, this didn't ever really come to the forefront. And so I don't blame, I don't blame anybody for this kind of being dismissed because autism in, in girls specifically growing up, it's not something. There are so many women now who are being diagnosed as autistic because it was missed. I'm not alone in this. This isn't just like, oh, woe is Courtney. This didn't just happen to me. I'm sure there are tons of you watching this right now who can relate to this. So now how did I take all of that information? Like how did we get from all of that crap to figuring out a diagnosis. So it started when I was 25. I came across, like, YouTube recommended me a video. YouTube never recommends me anything useful. This was the one time it did. And it was a YouTuber by the name of, I hope I get it right, Amethyst Shaber or Shaber. I'm not totally sure. Amethyst, if you should see this, I, I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. And I came across this video. I started to relate to things. I'm looking at him like, oh my gosh, I do that. That's something that I do. Oh, that's an issue? I've never heard of anybody talking about this before. What is this? I started thinking about it, right? Started talking to my doctor about it, getting dismissed as it's not a big deal, whatever. Because again, autism has such a, a negative image associated with it. Like this, this couldn't be about wanting to know yourself better. This is just about a label and you don't want to label yourself despite the fact that my whole life I've been labeled one way. It would be nice to have the right one so that I can actually get the accommodations that I need. Like little things, my dudes, little things. And this isn't the journey. If you want to listen to my entire journey, how we got here, watch me go through the whole assessment and everything, I will leave a link to that in the cards and in the description box as well so you can check that out. TikTok. Please let me asterisk this and say that, you know, diagnosing yourself, diagnosing, diagnosing, oh God, that yourself via the internet, you should never really just pick one or two things that fit the narrative, right? Do your research if something resonates. Like if anything in my video resonates with you, I've got resources down below. Please follow up, start doing that research. We can talk about that more in another video. Any questions, leave them below. Okay, so now that I've said that. But TikTok, figured out in under an hour, okay? It started showing me all of the autistic creators on TikTok started just popping up, just left, right, and center. And one in particular hit me in the face like I couldn't believe, okay? Sound of the forest. The headphones. Nicole, there's never a chance that, that you're actually going to see this, but if by some fluke you should. These headphones, guys, these are the Quiet Comfort 45s. I swear by these. I live in them now. But she acts in her videos, how she is in her videos is like, is like, is like what I feel like. She does the little, the little hand, the little thing that I do. 
I'm watching this and I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, oh my goodness. And I couldn't believe it. And and so, you know, and I'm, I'm scrolling through and I'm like, the sensory swing. I got myself hooked up with right away. I got the headphones right away. I was starting to make these accommodations for myself because of Nicole, Sound of the Forest, because of you. Back when I was 25, I had done the first test to kind of also kind of guide me. It was the Aspie quiz. I had done that and that had kind of kind of sent me in a bit of a direction, but I didn't know at the time what to do with that. So I ended up through all of these creators on TikTok finding all of the other assessment, kind of the things that you do before your assessment, like the quizzes, because you do want to be sure, like it's not cheap. Like it cost me about 5,000 Canadian dollars to do this. I don't know if that's appropriate to say or not, but but there it is. That's what it cost me to have this done. So obviously this was not a cheap thing to go through. So I wanted to make sure that I was sure that this was what was going on and it met everything, right? So yes, could it just be depression, anxiety, OCD, picky eater? Could it be all of these things? Or could one thing explain all of it? You know, I started talking to some of my friends about it and they were like, ooh, just based off of some of the information that I provided them with, they were like, huh, yeah, I could see that for you. All right, we're heading in a direction. I feel like this vein is like really popping out of my head right now. I have a wicked headache, you guys. Oh my goodness. And so it was thanks to uh, two friends in particular, their little boy had been diagnosed as being autistic. So they had some resources to share with me. They were like, uh, yeah, you know what? We've got some names of some people who could potentially help you with this. If it wasn't for these two, you know who you are. If it wasn't for these two, my God, I may have never followed through. And same with Eric. Like Eric was the one, he's like, all right, we're doing this. We're doing this. I'm booking the appointments. I'm, I'll am i take care of whatever we got to take care of to make this happen. I mean, like I paid for it. I mean, but he, he, without Eric's help to help support me because I didn't work for the, for the two months, like I barely got through anything. Like I was just a lump on the couch, okay? A lump on the couch, crying, being miserable, just no good. What having a diagnosis has actually meant for me because a few people have asked at 35, like, what was the point of, of this? You know, I'm not planning on, like, kicking the bucket tomorrow. I'm hoping to enjoy the rest of my life with this newfound knowledge about myself. And I had one person, one idiot, leave a comment. But they were like, if you've lived a normal life, then you're not autistic. And I'm like, nothing about my life has been normal. Nothing about my experience has been stereotypical or normal. And we're talking about my experience. Obviously, you can you can compare yourself left, right, sideways, whatever, to everybody else in the world and think like, oh, it wasn't as bad for me or whatever. But no, 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 we're just talking about my experience, like horses, rein them in, okay? When I have talked to people and I've done the research now and I'm finding out that, what do you mean? That this has been not the, what? I feel like the veil has been lifted. Okay? And you also have to know the, the glimpse of my life that you guys see through my channel and through my social media is not an accurate full reflection. Like it's all curated. Like what I share with you guys, I'm very selective of what I share. Like this series has just become kind of its own thing because I think that it's so important to share. For the most part, what you see me put together is not what I'm actually like in real life. Okay? So just so you know. And what I kind of equate it to is I've been running a different operating system, okay? Like I have a Mac, which is here. You guys can't see it, but it's here on my table. And I have a PC as well. Let's just say for argument's sake that I'm a Mac and everybody else is a PC. But the manual that I was given to run my computer, my OS, okay, was for a PC and it doesn't work, okay? Like control alt delete is not a thing. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So that's, that's what it feels like. So what this has meant for me is that now I know, now I know and I've got the tools, okay? Now I can actually move forward and say, how can I be more comfortable and more functional and more just part of society and my space if I want to be or not, but do it in a way where I'm actually safe mentally and physically right? That was the whole point of getting a diagnosis. It's not going to explain away bad behavior or I'm trying to make people feel sorry for me or I'm trying to upset anybody. Like that was not the point. The point of this was to understand myself a little bit better because what comes off as selfish sassy pants or laziness isn't, isn't how I'm actually feeling on the inside. Like, I hope that makes sense. I hope that there's somebody out there who's like, yes, Courtney, I understand. Like, I get it. It makes total sense. Okay. And I do want to make a video talking about self-diagnosis and accommodations without a diagnosis as well, because accommodations, right? Like they're human needs. 
These are not special needs. These are human needs. This is just me as a human running a slightly different system, needing slightly different things. And why should I not get those? Why should you not get those? Why should you not have what you need to live your best life? I cannot grasp this for a concept. This could just be the tism talking, but I just I don't grasp it. I don't get it. So now, of course, if you've resonated with anything that I've said today, I've got resources down below. Definitely check out my previous video if you need some more kind of, I don't even what, what do you call it? Like inspo to get you started, to, to get you on your journey. I want to hear from you guys. Leave me a comment. None of what I've said, please don't take it as for sure medical advice. That's not what this video was intended for. It's just so that you can have somebody's perspective out there that you can maybe take something away from and say, oh, hang on, there is somebody across the planet or even closer, I don't know, who, who I relate to in this area. Maybe... Maybe I could do a couple of these tests and see if this could answer your questions, if this could set you on the path to knowing yourself a little bit better, to getting those accommodations that you need. And we can talk about accommodations and such in future videos. I would love some ideas for what you guys, like the response on my previous video is mind blowing. I have never had that many comments on any video ever. So if you have something specifically you'd like me to talk about, leave me a comment, let me know, and, and maybe I can put something together and maybe help answer a question or point you in the right direction or give you my thoughts or whatever. Like a dear Courtney column, if you will. <laughs> and otherwise, I want to thank you guys so much for all of the support and all of the love. I I don't know if you know what that means to me. Some of the things that you guys said in the comment section of my previous video, I was not expecting that. Um, it's definitely thrown a few people in my life for a loop and it's definitely going to have changed some relationships and I'm kind of making my peace with that. The majority of you guys, I can't believe, I can't believe how many people out there resonated with that and the stories that you guys shared. I read every single comment and I've been continuing to read every single comment on that video. I'm just so grateful. So thank you so much for your support, for watching today's video as well. I love you all my fishes and I look forward to catching you all again in my next video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, subscribe, hit the bell, all the things, and we'll see you again soon. Happy swimming. Bye. Like, is happy swimming still? It's part of my brand. Is that still an okay thing to say? Because like, do you all swim? I don't know. I'll have to think on that. Okay, that's it. All right. I love you. Bye-bye. A big thank you to the Patreon pod for helping sponsor today's episode. The Patreon pod is your mermaid home away from home with a private Discord community chat, weekly live streams with replays where you can actually watch me make mermaid tales live as well as get exclusive looks at upcoming projects I'm working on and more. Please check out the link in the description box down below. Oh.